All right. Well, welcome everybody. This is, like I said, um, this is our Flux 2 image update automation sneak peek. Um, Lee Kapili, developer experience engineer here at WeaveWorks is on with me and he will be doing the presentation today. My name is Stacy Potter. <laughs> I'm a community manager and I work with Lee here at WeaveWorks. So thanks for joining us today. So if you've joined us in the past few weeks or months or years, <laughs> you know now that we are hard at work on uh, Flux V2. Um, the team has really been putting lots of effort in there trying to get feature parity with Flux V1. We are well on our way. This is a huge milestone for us actually. Um, the alpha release of the image update uh, automation is a pretty big deal. Um, so Lee's going to talk all about that. And if you've missed any of the previous sessions, you can always head back to our YouTube channel and check those out in the past. Lee's really done a fantastic job of covering all of the different topics um, that walk you through so much of the, of the Flux user guide. So please do and go and check those out. They're, they're super great. And as usual, uh, if you have any feedback for us, we'd love to, to have that. If you have something that you're burning to see uh, that we haven't covered yet, please let us know as well. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. So a little bit uh, quickly about the company that Lee and I work for. Um, it's called Weaveworks. Hopefully, if you know us, you know us from our open source work. Um, we have a lot of different projects, uh, but a couple that I'll mention here are um, Flux, of course, which we'll be talking about today, which is in the CNCF as a sandbox project at the moment, although we are well on our way, hopefully, to incubation, and we will be in incubation soon. Flagger has also been moved under the Flux umbrella in the CNCF. Um, so hooray, that is now uh, an, a CNCF project under the Flux umbrella. And um, you can go and check out all of our other pro projects uh, on our website at weave.works or in our GitHub repo. Couple of uh, housekeeping items here. Um, most of you are probably fully aware of how Zoom functions, but in case, um, you're new to Zoom. If you want to ask a question at any point, please just go ahead and type it into the chat box. When you do type it in, just change the to field from uh, just panelists to all panelists and attendees so that everyone on the call can see your question. Otherwise, I'll just go in and, and retype it so that everyone can see it. A lot of times we have uh, a lot of folks in the community who can, can and do answer questions while we're on the call. So, um, I will give a brief introduction to GitOps if you are new. So um, some basics, if, uh, if you're brand, brand new to GitOps, uh, as the name indicates, it's Git plus ops, or sometimes we like to call it uh, operations by pull request, where you have a, a repo as your single source of truth. Uh, it's not just app or dev or just operations, but really a methodology that crosses all areas. We talk about GitOpsing all of the things and the business value that comes with that are reliability, velocity, and security benefits. Uh, it's also a paradigm or a methodology. It's not one single tool or technology. Of course, we're very excited about uh, our Flux project and we work really hard to get it into a place where we've already brought GitOps value, but we're thinking about the vision of the most powerful way we can think about GitOps in the coming years and hopefully decades. And we do really feel that even if you're not using Kubernetes, you can still use GitOps. But if you are using Kubernetes, it's a really it's really part of that evolution of Kubernetes, leaving leveraging the um, the Kubernetes API and and what what that brings is really is the next stage of of uh, of leveraging, leveraging those benefits of, tech, of that technology. And we're excited to be a part of that community. So again, um, if, you're, if you're new to GitOps, we have a lot of GitOps talks on our YouTube channel. You can go and check those out, especially from our previous GitOps days um, talks in the past. This last year, we had two different events that we held. So you can go and check those out as well. So the principles of GitOps, I'll run through these very quickly and then we'll, we'll turn it over to Lee. Um, not everybody has all four of these. So really anywhere you start is a great place to start on your journey. Uh, whether you're using Git as your versioning system or not, the most important thing is that you're using a versioning system. Other principles are you have a declarative system 
and that you have a way in which changes are automatically applied to that system. And then at the end, you have ways of reconciling uh, and ensuring you have correctness with alerts with that. So that's a very bare bones uh, principle definition there, an overview of our principles. But uh, yeah, hopefully, if you have any questions, please send them into the chat. And um, I think that's that's it for my uh, for my intro slide. So Lee, I will uh, I will turn it over to you. Totally. Yeah. If you would um, just uh, yeah, thanks for dropping that. So. What Stacy's talking about here with the principles of GitOps and about why it's so, so sensible and so such a natural progression from the, using Kubernetes uh, is it comes down to the fact that Kubernetes is really, in a lot of ways, not good enough to hold on to the information that is necessary to run the infrastructure that powers our services, our businesses, our organizations, uh, and maybe even just our home infrastructure, uh, whatever you're using Kubernetes to actually manage the workload for, uh, there is a problem. And it's that when you put config into Kubernetes, it expands. And it expands through this kind of jazz orchestra of controllers that modify and change what you tell Kubernetes to do. It starts decorating your information. So while Kubernetes is declarative, you take all of that intellectual property, those declarations that keep your infrastructure running, that get it to that state. And then Kubernetes goes and iterates on it for you in a declarative and resilient way. Now, if you had any code comments, if you had left out any fields, if you were using an older API version, when you commit those things, when you apply them to the cluster, you lose that information unless you're storing it somewhere else. So this is the, this is the, the first reason why GitOps is so important. I think it's a really big missed point. And so those principles then that Stacy's going over about what we look for in a GitOps system, we found working in the Flux community as well as the broader GitOps community that all of you have become a part of, that these kind of tenants help us produce a really mature approach to collaborating around the where Kubernetes stops and collaboration and versioning and um, factoring your code in a way that is more humanly understandable than Kubernetes YAML manifests. All of that extra activity that you want to do around the distributed computer, the API that is Kubernetes, we can accomplish that by adding Git and the Git ecosystem of tools like GitHub into the mix. So what I'm excited to share with you today, because with Flux, we are so fanatical about building the best GitOps tooling available, the most flexible, the most thoughtful, the easiest to use uh, APIs and tools that will get you to doing GitOps in the way that your company needs to do it, in the way that your organization, your team makes sense to you. I'm, I'm excited to give you a little bit of a preview of something that fits to the very far right of the GitOps maturity model, which is active reconciliation of state and declaration outside of Kubernetes back into your sources and your Git repositories. And we're going to go over image automations. So uh, Stacy, is it looking good? My screen's up, right? Yep, you're good. Cool. So we have a guide and I'll preface this by saying that the image automation APIs and controllers that we are experimenting openly in Flux 2 with the community, uh, the designs, all of this is in progress. Uh, we consider the feature set that I'll be demoing today to be in preview or alpha state. Now, I would be super excited uh, to hear opinions from all of you out on the Slack channel, uh, in the GitHub discussions. 
uh, go try this out if, with your infrastructure, especially if you're in a already deploying Flux2 in the development environment. Um, or, I mean, use it in prod if you want. I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm guilty, and some of you probably are of using preview and alpha features in prod because it just made sense. Um, the good thing is, I think our, our upgrade story for Flux uh, with any alpha preview features is a pretty solid one because everything's very decoupled. So you're not going to get into a bad state if you try to do this thing in prod. So what are we talking about? What's the goal here? When we talk about image automation, uh, there's a very popular feature uh, that was around in Flux 1. And people used it, and it just worked. And it was magical. But it also had some shortcomings. And the landscape of image registries has changed a little bit. Popular image registries are now rate limiting folks. Um, we've caused some outages with Flux being deployed in very large environments. Um, and so we have addressed some of these issues and have built what I think is a very flexible and a good approach here that factors well into the Flux2 ecosystem. We are going to be able to configure Flux2 inside of the Kubernetes cluster, reach out to container registries, and scan them for what tags are available. So this is adding another source into the mix, right? We've got Git repositories we can sync from buckets, we can sync from Helm repositories, fetch those sources into the cluster and use other controllers in Flux to apply those things. Now we want to do something about the tags that are stored inside of our registry. This is another source in a way. We want to scan those tags and then based off of some declarative policy that we tell Flux about, we want to then actively reconcile what tag we want back into the Git repository. So we're not going to change anything in Kubernetes. Right? Because remember, when we change things in Kubernetes, if that state, if our, if our desire is not stored and versioned in somewhere where we can collaborate, Kubernetes will lose it. And so it's important that if we say want to update to a new tag, we use our collaboration tools like Git and GitHub or Bitbucket to properly store and version our change. That way, say we wanted to recreate our cluster, the newest image tag that we want deployed will be available. Immediately, we're not deploying some old version of software first and then waiting for something to reconcile it or noticing later, you know, two weeks that it's caused an outage because there was a missing feature or something. So we want Flux to commit back the image to our repo. And then Flux is then going to go through its normal reconciliation process, right? Whatever repo we choose for the commit to go back to, then maybe it goes through a pipeline or maybe it's just a static change. Uh, it eventually gets applied back to the cluster using our preferences on how we've configured Flux to, to sync everything. And that's important. So um, what we are going to do is make sure that we've got our cluster set up. And I've just done this ahead of time so that you don't watch me going through another Flux Bootstrap. Uh, if you want to watch a Flux Bootstrap live, you can look up the power of GitOps on YouTube. Uh, but here, what I've done is uh, just uh, configured my user and my token. Uh, again, this token uh, has access to create repos and modify them. Um, so you just do that in your uh, settings page on GitHub. And once you've done those two things, you just run this one command. Cool. So what I'm doing here is I'm bootstrapping Flux into my Kubernetes cluster. I'm having I, I'm using an AKS uh, Azure cluster right now. And uh, you could do this on kind if, if you want. Uh, I've tested that as well, and it's, it works. So we bootstrap using the GitHub uh, provider. I am going to have my user create a repository on my behalf. Um, this is item potent, so if this repo already exists, it'll just add a directory to it. Uh, I want to use the main branch. I'm going to make this one personal, uh, but you could make it public if you want. Uh, Flux generates PKI if you need. I'm going to use the clusters, my cluster subdirectory. So two subdirectories there. 
uh, anything, any manifests that get committed into this directory are going to be synced to the cluster. That's just the way that Flux Bootstrap works. Uh, and it uses some Flux APIs in the background to make that happen, but it's fully configurable. And then there's something new here, right? So we actually want to ask Flux to deploy some extra components. So because we're playing with very preview features here, the image reflector controller, which is responsible for actually looking at what tags are available, and the image automation controller, which is responsible for enforcing our policies, uh, these two uh, independent components are not deployed by default. Um, in addition, it's also really important that you use token auth. Now, if you mess any of this stuff up, Flux Bootstrap is idempotent. So you can just run this command again, right? Say that I only uh, ran this command up to here and I didn't do any extra components or token auth. I could just run Flux Bootstrap on my repo and these things would be added and my authentication method in the cluster would actually change uh, from using. Uh, SSH key to using my GitHub token. There are some shortcomings with using uh, personal access tokens. For instance, if the account is revoked, then the personal access token will also be revoked. Um, but that's that's just little things like that. So uh, what you can see here is that Flux Bootstrap created a repo on my on my behalf, and then it automatically uh, added some Flux manifests to it. So from the very beginning of uh, interacting with a brand new cluster, if you use Flux Bootstrap, then you get GitOps applying to the cluster from day one. You never do a kubectl apply to the cluster because you don't need to. Everything will sync from Git. Uh, so it gets a Flux Bootstrap is a nice tool to kind of get everything all hooked up to each other uh, without having to do any messy administrative actions. Uh, it adds a bunch of the uh, controller manifests, make sure that everything's synced, and that's great, right? So if I actually say Flux get uh, customizations, and then we can see here, there is a customization that's applied at the ref that uh, got pushed to our repo. So let's go ahead and clone that. I'll just clone my users. I think this one's called Flux Image Automation. Yeah, got that name right. And I'll be following the guide here pretty much step by step. So um, I did make this repo personal. Uh, I just didn't see much value in making it public. Since if you do this exact same thing, you'll end up with the exact same result. Cool. So I did the bootstrap with the personal uh, or a personal repo with using token auth and the extra components for image reflector controller and image automation controller. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll try to get to them at some point during the talk. So everything is bootstrapped. Uh, our cluster is happy. Right? We can kind of see that there's really not much in it uh, except for the flux install, right? So here you can see an installation of Calico and then there's like all of our controllers for flux, including our image automation controller and reflector controller. Um, again, the automation controller actually enforces our policies and the reflector controller is how flux finds out about what tags are available from our image register. Uh, you can also see that if we look at the CRDs that are installed, um, that flux, installed some CRDs related to image policy, image repos, and image update automations. So three separate objects that capture different portions of solving that problem. For instance, where do I look for tags? That's the image repo. What do I wanna do about those tags? That's the image policy. And based off of the policy that I would like to enact, where should I go enforce that automation and what strategy should I take to actually commit that thing back to the repository? So with these three portions of the problem separated, we give you a flexible approach to decide where do you want to point to, what image tags are you interested in watching? Uh, that's going to protect you from rate limits. Uh, and then what's your policy about it? Are you using calendar versioning? With timestamps, are you using SEMVAR, which is very popular these days? Flux can understand different types of image tags. Uh, there's tag filtering and prefixes and regex, you know, parsing and all that kind of richness that you can get with image policies. And when your policies fire, you can decide specifically 
how those policies update repositories and which repositories using the source API. So very cool uh, factoring here. And let's do a demo. Um, what we'll do here, we've cloned the repo already. Uh, this little curl command is going to steal a manifest from uh, Stefan Pradhan's PodInfo repository. It's just a popular demo app that we like to use. Cool. So now we can see um, that I've added a manifest to my repo inside of my clusters, my cluster directory. I'm just pulling up VS Code here. And uh, we can see that we've added pod info deployment into just the plain manifest into this directory. There's also the flux system directory, which includes all of our uh, management of the actual flux install. And since we did a flux bootstrap, everything is controlled via GitOps. All right, so I just add a manifest to my repo. Um, we can see here we want to deploy pod info version 500. Uh, and yeah, the Nothing radical here, just a plain Kubernetes manifest uh, adding a deployment to our cluster that's going to run an image from a public registry. Cool. So um, if I just say, yeah, we'll, we'll say deploy on it. The default. And oops. Commit. Push it up. I'm going to do one more trick here because I haven't set up any webhook receivers. Um, Flux has a reconcile command, and I'm just going to tell uh, the Flux system uh, to run the reconcile function for my source for Git uh, immediately if it's not already done it. Uh, this is because since we're in the middle of a live demo, I just want to make sure that you have really fast results. Um, otherwise, that might take two minutes. Yeah. And, um, and if you're looking for a push-based workflow, um, which would be very important for more development things, but less valuable for something like production after all things are built, uh, then you would just use our uh, webhook guide. And uh, here we can see that if I get the customizations, uh, that just because the source um, was reconciled, if it noticed a change, uh, then now it applies the new revision as well. Right. So very quickly, source controller fetches the things using the source API, uh, customized controller notices, and then it applies for change. Awesome. Right. So that's just normal GitOps stuff if you haven't seen it before. And let's get to what came for. Right. So that's good. We've just we've got our um, deployment running. Should probably show that. There it is. Pod info with a ready replica. And um, if we describe the pod info deploy and then grep for um, uh, five. We should probably look for, uh, for the image. There you go. You can see we're at version five, right? But if we look in the registry, uh, there's actually going to be more tags. So let's go ahead and add a image repo object. This um, command right here, what we're going to kind of uh, creatively use is the export flag from flux create image so we've got the flux command line tool which just helps you uh, apply objects uh, that are related to your GitOps uh, assemblies uh, into your cluster and uh, we can use that to kind of generate manifest based off the options that we apply right so here i'm saying i want to scan every minute uh stefan's uh github container registry repo uh, to see all of the tags for the pod info repository. And this is important because Flux isn't looking at every single image in my cluster anymore, like how it used to do in Flux 1. So it's not just blasting your container registries for any image that's deployed. And maybe that's kind of a magical feature that some people want. You, we could write a controller that helps you do that kind of thing by just you know, having a policy of which images to watch. But here, you get very granular and explicit control about what requests your cluster is going to be making outbound to other registries. And that allows you to also um, decide how often you think these tags should even be changing and when you want to, um, to ping that repo for a tag update. Right. So here, we just want to do it every minute. But, um, let's go ahead 
Uh, we're going to output that again into our bootstrap folder. Now we have a pod info registry YAML. So we're going to track the registry, right? There we go. And uh, there's a note here about for uh, working with private registries. And we also have a couple of examples. Uh, down here, AWS, Google Cloud, and I think the Azure example, that, that'll be updated when we release this week because um, I just pushed an Azure example. But um, yeah, if you want to scan a private registry, you'll need to point Flux to an uh, uh, image pull secret. Uh, it's a type of special Kubernetes secret that you can create with a particular format schema. Uh, that uses a Docker credentials JSON file. And if you don't have an image pull secret, you can use uh, one of our cloud examples to potentially integrate with the uh, IAM or workload identity or uh, active directory thing inside of your cluster. And uh, there's a lot of different solutions for how to do that with the cloud, or you could just generate a static credential. Uh, different uh, trader trade-offs and shortcomings and workarounds there, depending on what solution that you pick. Uh, but uh, deploying a controller that simply updates that image pool secret is good. So here we've configured the um, image repository. Now you'll see that if I were to say commit that, configure pod info image repo scanning, uh, oh, always forgetting to add my files. Cool. So you can see that we just added a another Kubernetes object to our repo to ask Flux to scan the pod info repo every minute, right? And that's pushed up to our uh, Git repo. So if we just make sure that Flux was reconciled, then very quickly that should happen. Uh, we look that the customization had applied that ref, which is true, those refs match, which means that we can look at the, what is that? Flux get image repos here. So here you can say uh, to Flux, hey, check my Kubernetes cluster. What image repos do I have? There's a pod info repo. It's ready. It's been reconciled. There was a successful scan that was done just a moment ago. It's not suspended and it found 16 tags. Uh, similarly, if you didn't have the Flux command line tool, uh, say you're new to Flux as an operator or an SRE, uh, you just showed up to a cluster and you saw Flux was installed, uh, you could just check the image repositories API. I did that for all namespaces. You can see that that's there. Uh, you don't get the nice printing for all of our custom fields in kubectl. I guess we just haven't configured that for our CRD there. Um, there. There definitely are some limitations uh, for the table printers. It's just little things like that. You can see there were 16 tags, so that's good. I guess we, we do print the tags for that column. Uh, you could also describe it uh, just using the kubectl command line tool. I have that aliased namespaces, and you can see that you'll get a bunch of status conditions and all kinds of things like that. So. All that data is there in the API. So Flux knows about the image tags. That's awesome. Right? But let's create a policy that will fire. So right here, this image policy, uh, I want to name it pod info. It's going to be related to that one. I'm going to reference an image repo, which is the object that we just created. I'm going to tie it to that. And every minute, I just want to actually uh, keep up to date within Semver on the version 5 release track. Right? So I want to have patch updates, but I want to stay on minor version 0. And um, yeah, we'll export that to file in our repo. I can show you what that file uh, looks like if I remember to add it. Um, might as well just look in here. Here's the policy, right? It's pretty much just the longer version of that command line flags. And yeah, we'll just say any semver range uh, within major version five, minor version zero, patch version, anything, right? Give me the latest patch. 
Let's go ahead and commit. Say, add an image policy. On info v5. Push. Reconcile. So again, that reconcile would happen automatically um, and immediately if you were using a GitHub webhook. Just didn't install that for that. And um, cool. So we should be able to look at our image policies inside of Kubernetes. Flux system, pod info, there's our policy. So you can see Flux quickly figured out that there's actually an image that's supposed to be applied, right? There were 16 tags within the 5.0 uh, release series. There's actually 5.03 out on the registry. Um, that uh, is what our policy describes. So what should we do about that? We use the third object. Um, and you can see notes about what different kinds of strategies are, or uh, what different kinds of policies you can use, that kind of thing. Again, I mentioned like calendar versioning and regex parsing and stuff like that. You can do all sorts of really creative things inside of your uh, image tags. So, but uh, yeah, we go ahead and let's configure the actual image update, right? So this is where the API decisions that we've made get a little bit creative because now we have to come up with some way for Flux to know where in your entire Git repo, which could be structured however you want. We don't force you in Flux to have any particular structure. Uh, lots of people always ask about what the best way to lay out the repo is. And we have some decent opinions. Some people have even wrote up specifications. It's awesome because the tools are flexible. You can do what you need. We don't force you in a particular workflow. So how can you notate where in your repository you need to update a value? What we decided to do inside of the image update controller is have it be able to parse the actual files, the actual manifests inside of your repository to figure out where to do this. In Flux 1, we used to do this structurally with an annotation and the UX was questionably good, but also kind of sucky and it had limitations. What I, I'm, I'm very excited about this change. And at first I was very skeptical. If we have some manifest inside of our repo and we comment where our image is that we would like Flux to associate that tag or this image with its tag, that whole repo and tag combination with a particular policy, right? So the thing that you actually want it to follow, I would like this particular uh, entry to follow this policy that I've declared. Then Flux will know to look inside the Kubernetes cluster, which is important, and figure out what that value should be. The, I, I mentioned that it looks inside the Kubernetes cluster because it's not looking in your repo for what the policy is, which means that the policy can actually come from somewhere else, right? You could configure the policy from one place and then reference it from a different place if you want. We're not forcing you to even use one repository. The, everything is decoupled enough to where you can string it together in the right way with minimal declarations, but it's not magic anymore. Like you have control. And so if we associate this manifest with this policy and this line, then we can use a patch library to update that value and commit it back to the repo. And you can tell Flux how to do that. So lots of flag options here again, but you know, you can you can generate this uh, using the command line or you could author the API object if you know it well enough. So here's just a quick way to get that example. We are going to 
have a flux system automation YAML that is an image automation type. And what this will do is we specify that we would like to check out the main branch for this particular Git repo ref. Notice that's not just a plain source ref because there's no such thing as checking out a bucket per se, right? But if you um, if you were to use a different field here, you know we could have different strategies for dealing with SVN or various types of sources. But for a Git repo ref, we can supply a branch, and that's going to be the normal Bootstrap repository inside of the Flux system namespace. Uh, but you could point it to a different repo if you wanted. So when we do that, we would like to commit with these details. And you can interpolate a bunch of fields into this uh, message template as well, right? So if you want to show like what the image got updated to in the commit message, you could do that. And uh, there's the normal interval uh, specification as well. So you can control how often these things happen, how much resources are being used in your cluster, how much network traffic is occurring, that kind of thing. And um, yeah, in general, there's not really uh, a compelling reason on a small or even large scale, I don't think, you know, to not set these intervals to something attractive, like a minute or 10 minutes. Um, and all this stuff can also kick off via webhooks. But, um, so one key point here to understand, uh, and again, this the API is formational, right? So if, if you don't like the way that this works, leave some feedback. But um, what we figured is that you'll notice the automation doesn't actually reference any policies or any repos. It only references a source that needs to be updated. What happens is that anytime an image policy updates inside of the namespace, all of the, uh, or sorry, anytime the image automation reconciles, all of the image policies in the namespace are run. And that allows us to ensure that every repo that you hook up and every image tag that you're watching uh, is updated at that time. Right? So that's how this gets tied. This image up update automation gets tied to the policy that we wrote about it. Right. And so it doesn't need to know, you know, like uh, whether we are using Semver or what or whatnot the value that outputs from the image policy is what's used to commit it back to your repo simply using this automation strategy. And um, so if we go ahead and commit that. And that is commit. Handle automation. Uh, for flux system policies uh, to which draft What's a couple of smiley faces every now and then in your commit message, right? I uh, um, wonder if flux was able to catch that already. Look at the customizations. So that's on the previous ref. So let's just ask for reconcile. Perfect. Cool. There's that now. That means that we should have get yep, get image automation. Oops. Update. There we go. So no updates have been made yet. Policy has the latest tag. Let's see. Maybe we should ask for that to reconcile. Updates have been made. It was resolved. Did I put it in the right namespace? Did I not follow the guide well enough? Let's see. 
customization with source. That's correct. Sorry, friends, I might have made a mistake somewhere. Hmm. Update strategy. I think that I noticed that that wasn't actually configured here. Maybe there's no default value for that. Date strategy. Just make sure that I'm using the most up-to-date version of the API as well. Uh, kubectl explain can help you know. Um, update about the fields that are actually installed in the custom resources in your cluster. Uh, so I'm interested currently in the image update automation spec update field. And here, strategy name is the strategy. Update gives a specification for how this can be left or to use the default value. It says it can be left empty. Image policy was there. Image. A image update automations. Last runtime, 1841. That was a few seconds ago. Policies, image update automation. Was last run this minute. Forget image updates. Gosh, what is happening? Usually I do all of this stuff in the same commit. I wonder if there's a condition somewhere. The nice thing about these uh, preview style loops is that you get to watch me debug things. I'm not getting a lot of questions in the chat. You, you folks are kind of a quiet bunch today. Usually uh, there's all kinds of all sorts of um, chat going on. Oh, never mind. I see now that there's a ton of chat messages. I, sorry, I guess I was looking at the wrong um, chat window, friends. Oh, uh, Steve Harris, I see you asked a good question about cluster admin level privileges. Um, the individual component customized controller does have cluster admin uh, access using the default service account that's being used to apply to the cluster. Um, we do have a multi-tenancy example. Um, and then also an open multi-tenancy proposal to address that a little bit. Uh, and Andreas, uh, check the Azure guide uh, for the AAD pod identity example. Still going to try to figure out what's uh, going wrong with the uh, image update. I was expecting this to be a short and simple demo, but I guess I did something wrong. Let's see. Git repo ref flux system. Try to do something like this. Date setter image date. Push. We are using token auth, which is important. Secrets. System secret, which should be using. A token, does my token have access to the repo? It should. 
Uh, Steve Harris, the the multi tenancy proposal for the future of things is issue 582. There's a linked discussion on it as well, and there's the the repo is flux to multi tenancy example. I think just Google it. Let's see. Uh, Guillaume says, did you patch your deployment with the comment policy? No, I didn't. That's the problem. Thank you. That's the one. I made the mistake. There we are. It's gonna, gonna be right here. I should read the guide instead of talking so much. That's the problem, right? There we go. Uh, so that will get hooked up to the pod info image policy. That's why there's no update. There's nothing wrong with Flux. It's just something wrong with me, right? All right, um, so that'll be image policy pod info inside of Flux system. We're going to hook up the repo to that policy so that it gets updated. Uh, configure our deployment um, to follow the policy. There we are. That was such a good suggestion. Thank you, Guillaume. Maybe somebody said it as well before, and I just didn't read the chat. Yeah. It was pushed. Oh, look at that. I'm immediately out of date on the repo. That's just ZSH telling me that I have commits down. All right. Let's see what happened. Cool. Uh, we Here we can see that Flux did a uh, CI skip update image, and it uh, just updated the tag for me, right? So um, if we make sure that the Git source is reconciled inside of our cluster, and then we were to grep for image again on our deploy, uh, I would expect that version 503 would be the actual image version that's deployed inside of our cluster. And that's because of uh, the image update, right? Which uh, was able to run and then do, do its thing, right? probably get some richer information if we actually looked at the status conditions. We could probably improve the UX here a little bit because obviously an update was made, uh, just not on the last reconcile. Let's see. If I look at the image update automation in the cluster and I describe it so that I can get the events that occurred on the object, that would probably tell me, yeah, here. Uh, a, it committed and pushed a change at a particular time. That's in the events. Uh, and then this is really just the last transition time. So there's not really a log of that inside of the object beyond the events. Uh, I think the default event expiration time inside of a cluster is 10 minutes. Um, so if you were collecting those into InfluxDB or something, you would have a way to uh, to know when those automations were occurring. It's always important to think about the observability of the components that we're building. Uh, most of the things in Flux uh, are some of the most observable stuff that I've, that I've been able to use. It's such a pleasure in the Kubernetes ecosystem to actually see what's going wrong. Um, how would we prevent operators in the future from making the same mistake that I did? Probably we would want to have some kind of counter of how many policies were running. Because uh, if I would have seen that zero policies ran on the update automation, uh, then that would have been an immediate uh, trigger there for somebody working with a system for the first time. So uh, voila, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for sitting with me uh, through my, I, I luckily only had one mistake in this live demo and we were able to finish it in time. Uh, what questions can we answer? Hmm. Yeah, well, I suppose just before we get to Q&A, um, I, I really love spending this time with all of you in the community. Um, there, what's the big idea here, right? The big idea is that with Flux2, we can use several different objects to flexibly configure where we 
look for image tech updates on what images in particular, what policies we should have about those tags. And then we can actually produce an image update automation that gets us to the far side of GitOps maturity, right? Which is that we can actively reconcile things that don't live in Kubernetes, right? Like your image registry, it doesn't live in Kubernetes, but we can write a controller using Kubernetes APIs and primitives and extensions that reconciles what we want relative to our, our image registry back into our declarations with our repo where we collaborate and save the state about how we run our infrastructure. And, and that's a big deal because again, just using Kubernetes, it's kind of like just using Linux without any kind of configuration management. That might be useful for you if you have one cluster for personal use, right? I don't use Puppet to manage my laptop. But when I share computers in a cloud with people, I need ways to collaborate that makes sense. And in the same way, if I were to use like a single Kubernetes cluster in my home, maybe I wouldn't need Flux. I probably would use it because I mean, I just know Flux well in the same way that I might use Puppet to manage my own Linux server. But as soon as I start sharing a Kubernetes cluster with somebody and we need to update it, we need to maintain that thing for five years, you know, so we run our applications, like maybe it's a stateful workload, right? Or say that I wanna be able to replace the cluster. How do I do that? I wanna store the information. I wanna keep the comments. I wanna keep the discussion about what changes we merged into the infrastructure to, to perform changes, to respond to an incident. And that's the power of GitOps. And when we add active reconciliation into that loop, the place where we collaborate on information about how we run our infrastructure, the robots can collaborate with us. Um, so thanks for, for coming uh, and checking out the image automation demo. Uh, thanks to Stacy for such a good intro on the tenants of GitOps. Uh, let's get into a little bit of q and I think we have some time. Um, there wasn't a more recent image than 503. The policy uh, was catching the latest image. Um, Vincent's asking about Terraform to create AKS clusters and bootstrap it. Uh, it sounds like you found a solution because we do have the Terraform provider Flux Bootstrap, um, Flux 2 Bootstrap in particular. Um, Jordan Shaw has a question about annotating charts directly and uh, image automation controller updating the charts instead. Um, if your chart source is inside of your repo, then that does work. Uh, the exciting thing about, uh, well, yes, it, it would work with a caveat. And um, this is why I didn't get to explain this, uh, but if you, if you take this approach where you actually annotate the, um, gosh, am I still sharing my screen? I'm not. Let's see, uh, where is the screen? Oh, maybe I am sharing my screen. Yes, I am. Okay, cool. Um, if, you, if you take this annotation approach where you're commenting where you want the value to update, as long as this is a valid YAML document, uh, Flux doesn't actually care whether or not it's an object that lives in your cluster. It, it, this is an object that lives inside of your Git repo. And we actually have examples of using this on a customization.yaml file, which is the specification for how customized will template and inflate and expand your manifests and patch them. And that's a big idea. It's a really big idea because since this is not a Kubernetes object, it can be any code that I want. It can be any config file that I want, uh, as long as it's JSON or YAML right now. I would be interested in supporting some other uh, formats as well, like HCL and TOML. Um, but yeah, say you want to update a Helm chart. You could have a Helm values file or a Helm release object, like a Flux Helm release object. And you can put this comment onto the right-hand side of any value. 
right? So you can say, hey, just update only the tag inside of a Helm release values file, right? I didn't even realize that I was looking at the exact example I was talking about. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's an answer to that question, Jordan. Um, this would probably be the most natural way to use Flux to update an image tag for a Helm chart. Uh, but you could also do it internally in the chart if your chart source was in Git. Uh, you would just have to point your image update automation to the place where you do your chart source releases. Um, and then make sure that you have a config file or a default values file where you update that image. Uh, and that just has to be a uh, structurally sound uh, YAML file. So if you had like weird templating and stuff in there that made it non valid YAML, uh, you would need to factor the those two parts away from each other. Uh, and then use Helm's tools to merge them. But uh, that's a uh, good, good note there. Um, thanks to Vincent for the call out on my on my super dope Windows XP start button. Uh, if you want to use this yourself, there's an open source project uh, called Open Shell, uh, and you can install it with Chocolatey if you would like. Uh, that would be this project right here. Uh, it is a uh, continue, con or it's it's the new fork that's maintained by the community from Classic Shell. Check it out. I thought you can uh, have cool start button. Uh, does the tag automation work for home releases? Yep, uh, was able, able to just cover that now. What else? Uh, Mitch says, Woot, been waiting for this. It's kept me on V1. Go try it out with Flex2 and uh, give us your opinion. I think that there's some really compelling um, compelling improvements uh, with these new APIs, even though they're still in an alpha state. Um, what else do we got going on? Is there a way to track channels, aka reused tags, instead of SimBear? I usually prefer tagging images like Death Test or Prod to promote them. Um, we kind of deprecated just looking for the latest tag um, because it is a little bit difficult, but let me think about this for a second. Yeah, Kubernetes doesn't know um, if you only have a single name uh, if a tag changes. Uh, it's just not a practice that works um, without some kind of stateful management of your deployment. Um, I suppose it would be possible to write a controller, but it, you would just be using a workaround uh, for like telling Kubernetes to update a deployment by like changing the annotation. Um, if the tag doesn't change, there's not a great way um for kubernetes to be informed of that because the object won't change you would have to like annotate the deployment uh with the hash of that image or something um in order for it to do a rolling update and then you would be relying on using an image policy of like pull always instead of only um if not present and uh then that would probably send way more requests to your container registry than you would need. Um, so I, I wouldn't recommend using a static tag, but um, Chris Pressland said, uh, asked about using globs like prod hyphen star. And it is possible to do that uh, using the image policy object, right? So if you look at uh, configure image scanning, you scroll down to the image policy section, uh, inside of the policy portion of this, if you look at the components, image automation controllers overview uh, page, and then, or maybe it's on the policy CRD, uh, you can see there's uh, filter tags, um, and then you can also uh, have regex in here. Uh, it's very detailed what you can do with the policy object. So it is possible to use image globs uh, and then parse bits out of it. We are at the Missing top of the Yeah, let's see if there's any other. Uh... You can always follow up via email as well or Slack. Yeah, yeah. Open a discussion on the um, 
Let's go. Yep. Pull requests, that was tricky, yeah. Uh, Andreas, yeah, the, the pull policy is kind of tangential to that question. And um, yeah, so it looks like we covered a, a number of questions. I didn't get to everything, but thanks so much for uh, being engaged and involved. Uh, we love hearing from the community. And um, yeah, thanks for coming. <laughs> we can, yeah, we can probably so much. close this out. For yeah, sure. Hit us, so, um, hit us up on the GitHub discussions. Exactly, and uh, and two weeks from now we'll we'll be uh, reviewing the uh, managed Kubernetes secrets with Mozilla SOP. So join us for that one too, and we'll uh, follow up via email with a bunch of resources. Thanks, everybody. Take care. <laughs>